What's going on guys? With Sing Chu becoming available to all players with the Stand By Me event, I thought now would be a great time to release my guide on him. Sing Chu is a support and sub DPS that has the potential to do more off-field damage than almost every other character in the game. As an elemental support, Sing Chu is consistently able to apply Hydra to enemies at a very high rate while being off the field. He also has pure support characteristics that include damage reduction, resistance to interruption, and some healing. Because Sing Chu can do all of this while being off the field almost the entire time, he's an extremely useful character in so many team compositions. You really can't go wrong building this character, as it is almost guaranteed that you have a use for him in one or all of your team comps. He works so well in freeze comps, vaporize comps, electrocharged, and even as a support to a physical DPS or selfish non-physical DPS such as Zhao. Sing Chu has one primary weakness in his kit that revolves around energy recharge, but there are ways to get around this and we'll discuss these later in the video. One of Sing Chu's best attributes is the combination of his rapid elemental debuff application and his damage scaling, which make him an amazing low investment support unit as well as a sub DPS that can deal significant burst damage depending on the amount of resources you decide to spend on him. Let's first talk about Sing Chu's talents. Sing Chu's normal attack is a series of five rapid strikes with the third and fifth attacks in the string being a combination of two attacks. His normal and charge attack scaling is fairly standard and is similar to the Traveler. They also both share an attack percent ascension stat and very close base attack scaling. His charge attack performs two strikes and will cause enemies to be pushed away. In general, we're not using Sing Chu for his normal attacks as we're prioritizing other stats that take away from their effectiveness. Sing Chu's elemental skill, Fatal Rain Screen, is where the majority of his pure support potential lies. The elemental skill deals two instances of Hydra damage in a small AoE to enemies directly in front of him. He will apply Hydra to himself, however this only lasts for about 0.3 seconds, so use some caution when casting this skill. The damage scaling on his E ability is actually quite high at 359% at only talent level 1 and 503% at talent level 6. This skill also reduces damage taken while it is active by between 20% and 29% between talent levels 1 and 10, with an additional amount added based on 20% of Sing Chu's Hydra Damage Bonus. For my current build, at talent level 5, this adds up to about 41% total damage reduction, and each time he takes damage, one of his Rain Swords will shatter. This is not as good as a shield, but considering the other advantages of his kit, it is certainly useful and with a 15 second duration on a 21 second cooldown, it will be up the majority of the time. With Sing Chu's first passive talent, this skill will regenerate 6% of Sing Chu's max HP to the active character each time a sword is shattered, which is around 830 HP for my build. This isn't much, but it can help in a pinch. Another advantage to this skill, particularly for melee carries, is that it will apply the wet status to enemies that come into contact with the rain swords. This can be extremely useful for characters like Diluc, Kaching, or Beto, as it will allow them to proc the elemental reactions vaporize and electrocharged even without his burst up, similarly to how Barbara's E works. There aren't many characters in the game that have this ability, and I believe this is an underrated part of his kit. The problem with Sing Chu's E skill is the extremely long cooldown of 21 seconds. While this is not the longest in the game, it is on the high side and his elemental burst has a high energy cost. This makes weapon and artifact optimization critical for getting the most utility out of Sing Chu. One of the best methods for mitigating the downtime on his burst is to perform his skill immediately before performing his burst when it is available. In this way, you're charging his burst while it is still active due to the delay between when his skill is cast and when the energy particles are collected. Now let's discuss his burst, which is the true power of his kit. His burst has a couple of functions. First, it will trigger consecutive rain sword attacks throughout its duration. These occur through basic attacking with the active character. This can be a melee, bow, or catalyst user, however their range is limited, and therefore they will not work with ranged characters once they pass a certain distance from the enemy. The swords will trigger even if an opponent is not hit with your active character, and the swords can still hit in this case. The Hydro Swords have a repeating pattern of two swords followed by three swords below Constellation 6, with each sword being able to individually crit. At Constellation 6, this changes to a pattern of two swords followed by three followed by five. These swords do a significant amount of damage. At talent level 6, each sword will do 76%, and these can occur once a second for 15 seconds total. Assuming the maximum number of swords hit during the duration, and you have Sing Chu below C6, this adds to a total of 37 rain swords or 2812%. That is an insane amount of damage. 
You will typically cast his burst and then switch to your main carry that can proc elemental reactions or just deal more raw damage than Sing Chu can himself. In order to get the maximum amount of damage from his burst, it is essential to use a character whose attack animation does not exceed one second and to continuously attack for the 15 seconds it is up. Upon casting his burst, the maximum number of rain swords will be applied and these will remain throughout the duration of his burst, meaning his burst provides as much or more damage mitigation than his skill. Because these do not break while his burst is up, all healing will occur when the cooldown ends. Even though Sing Chu's burst can do an insane amount of damage, he's actually an amazing support for a vaporize, freeze, or electrocharge comp with very little investment in artifacts and talent levels. This is especially true in a vaporized comp with a pyro main character, such as Deluke or Klee. If Sing Chu's hydro application is the aura element in the reaction, meaning the initial debuff on the enemy is hydro, then the pyro application that follows will have a damage increase of one and a half times. This damage increase will scale entirely off the stats of your main carry pyro character. Therefore, although you're losing on raw hydro damage with a low investment build, you're still getting the full benefit of the vaporized reaction. I've personally ran Sing Chu and Spiral Abyss teams and cleared through floor 12 running him as a sub DPS with plus zero to plus three artifacts. We'll get into team builds in a little bit and discuss this further. We've already discussed Sing Chu's first passive talent which gives him the ability to heal with his E and Q skills. Sing Chu's second passive talent grants him a flat 20% hydro damage bonus, so you should aim to ascend him to level 60 out of 70 to get maximum damage. Sing Chu's third passive talent is probably the best out of all the characters in the game, giving a 25% chance of refunding a portion of crafted talent materials. This equates to a significant resin savings over the course of playing the game. Let's briefly discuss Sing Chu's constellations. There are not a ton of characters that I necessarily feel like chasing constellations for in this game, however Sing Chu is a character that just keeps getting better with every single one. His weakest constellation is probably a C1, but it still adds to his support potential and is not wasted. C1 gives Sing Chu an additional rain sword from 3 to 4, allowing for additional damage reduction and healing. C2 is probably his biggest power spike. This constellation increases his burst duration from 15 seconds to 18 seconds and decreases hydro resistance of enemies by 15% for 4 seconds after being hit by a sword. This actually makes him an excellent support for Child and potentially other hydro main DPS units coming in the future. C4 increases his E damage by 50% while his burst is up, however because of the fact that it is best to cast his E before his Q, this is often not used. C6 is a second huge power spike, giving him the extra rain swords on his burst and increasing his support DPS. It also results in the generation of 3 energy when swords strike opponents, which means you can build him for less energy recharge and more pure damage. Now let's get into his builds. This section is actually pretty straightforward. As far as weapons go, Sacrificial Sword is his best in slot because of the ability to reset the E cooldown. We've discussed the fact that Sing Chu's biggest weakness is energy generation, resulting from a long E cooldown. This weapon allows nearly 100% burst uptime if he is built with sufficient ER. If you do not have a Sacrificial Sword, he will not do as much damage if not at C6, but other weapons are absolutely viable, and Sing Chu is still an amazing unit without it. I've been running Festering Desire as I just recently pulled a Sack Sword and haven't wanted to invest resources into it until after my Hu Tao build is complete. So let's briefly discuss the other options. From this list, you can use what you have because they all work with their ER secondary stats, but some are situationally better than others. Unfortunately, the only free-to-play option in this list is the Festering Desire that was a limited event weapon. If you have C6 or do not have any of these weapons, a weapon with attack percent or crit secondary stats would be the second best option. We'll discuss the Skyward Blade, Favonius Sword, and Festering Desire. A Skyward Blade has the highest base attack at 46, but only 12% energy recharge at level 1, which is lower than Favonius and Sacrificial. This weapon's passive increases movement speed and deals additional damage with normal and charge attacks after using your burst, but since you're typically swapping to a main DPS after using his ult, this is not super useful. The Favonius Sword has a high energy recharge at 13.3% at level 1 and a base attack of 41. This weapon also generates energy with crit hits, but Sing Chu must be on the field for this to occur, so this passive is also not super effective. If you do keep him on the field for a bit before swapping, you can gain some additional energy as each of his swords can crit. The Festering Desire is a base attack of 42, but lower energy recharge at 10% at level 1. This weapon's passive increases elemental skill crit rate by 12% and damage by 32% at refinement 5. His E does 503% damage at level 6, and this passive is the second most useful of this list in my opinion. Although it does lack energy recharge compared to the other 4 star options. This would be my personal second choice after Sack Sword. As far as artifacts go for late game, you should be prioritizing two sets, which are the Noblesse Oblige and Heart of Depth. 
the four-piece Noblesse set is one of the best universal support artifact sets, increasing elemental burst damage by 20% and increasing party members' attack by 20% after using a burst. Since almost all of his damage comes from his burst, and he's almost always swapped out for a main damage dealer, this is a perfect set for him. There are still reasons not to run this set. One, if someone else on your team is using this set, and two, because his burst does so much damage, it is arguably more beneficial in most circumstances to maximize his damage over your team's damage. The second point leans more towards having an endgame build on Sing Chu. As a low investment support, Full Noblesse is undoubtedly a better set where you're not worried about maxing all of Sing Chu's stats and just focus on increasing your team's overall DPS. To maximize his damage, you want to run 2-piece Heart of Depth with 2-piece Noblesse. The 2-piece Heart of Depth set increases Hydro Damage by 15%, with Sing Chu's second passive giving a 20% increase in Hydro Damage, the 2-piece set effect, and a Hydro Damage Goblet, I'm able to maintain 81.6% Hydro Damage bonus. Early game artifact sets that are good are Exile and Scholar for Energy Recharge, as well as any sets that boost overall attack, such as Braveheart and Sojourner. As far as stat priorities go, you're looking for attack, energy recharge, crit, and hydro damage bonus. It is optimal to get as much energy recharge from your weapon as possible. Then for artifact main stats you want to aim for, HP, attack, either energy recharge or attack percent, hydro damage bonus, and crit rate or crit damage depending on what is needed to accomplish a minimum ratio of 40% crit rate and 80% crit damage. For artifact substats, you want to prioritize energy recharge, crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent. In general, you should be aiming for about 200% energy recharge. At this percent, two uses of his elemental skill will charge his burst. This is where Sacrificial Sword really shines, as you can perform both instances of his skill within one second of his burst cooldown. Without Sac Sword, you'll most likely be waiting out a full rotation on his skill, or 21 seconds before you can cast his burst again. Now, all of this depends on your specific team comp as well as the content you're taking on. With a Hydro main DPS or secondary support, Sing Chu will gain additional energy particles. When taking on mobs of enemies, additional energy particles will be generated from kills, and in a quick swap comp, more skills will be cast, leading to additional energy generation. It is always best to test the amount needed in your specific team comp. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's briefly touch on team builds. Honestly, Sing Chu works well in almost any team, but we'll be focusing on the Freeze, Vaporize, and Electrocharge reactions. As a free support, he's excellent in a team with Kaya as a main DPS. Because Kaya can apply Cryo in close proximity and as a melee carry, his kit synergizes really well with Sing Chu, who can apply the Hydro status throughout his E and Q duration. The goal of this comp is to perma freeze opponents. Because Freeze does not do any damage on its own, we're taking advantage of the safety of the frozen enemies and the four piece Cryo artifact set bonus. Because of the short duration of Freeze in this game, Sing Chu is much better suited to this role than someone like Mona because he can apply Hydro consistently while off the field. Arguably the strongest comp makes use of Vaporize, making Sing Chu probably the best support for the Pyro characters to Luke and Klee, and likely the upcoming Hu Tao. Sing Chu can apply Hydro every one second while his burst is up, and because of how elemental gauges work in Genshin Impact, the Hydro debuff persists after Pyro application. This means that Pyro will be the trigger in almost all reactions and will benefit from the 1.5 times damage bonus, which is what is wanted for maximum damage. Sing Chu is also an excellent Hydro support for Electro characters like Beidou, Kaching, and Fischl. Electro Charge is different than Vaporize in that the damage of the reaction is not a multiplier, but is additional damage that scales off of the level and elemental mastery of the trigger character in the reaction. It seems to be inconsistent who is the trigger in these combos, so each character can be built to maximize damage and make use of the extra damage applied from Electro Charge without building for it specifically. Electro Charge is also an AoE damage type that procs twice. The amount of damage that occurs when Beidou and Sing Chu's ults are both up is pretty insane. What is great about Sing Chu is that he also works extremely well with the physical carry, as each time your physical carry attacks, additional hydro damage will also be applied, greatly adding to overall DPS. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please consider subscribing down below. I put out a Genshin Impact video just like this one every single week. I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace.